Hello, my name is Robert Llewellyn. You are watching the Fully Charged Show, and this is Fully Charged News. Now, over the last couple of years, we've heard some very negative stories about cobalt, about cobalt extraction, particularly in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. We've spoken about it at length, both on Fully Charged Show here and also on the Fully Charged Show podcast. And in case you haven't heard that, there'll be a link underneath this video. But that's besides the point, because the critical thing is there is zero excuse for in any way forcing or condoning or encouraging children to dig up rocks that we want to use in our personal electronics, our laptops, our phones, our smart speakers or our electric cars. It's just not right. But I just want to remind ourselves of the people who are really causing the big damage. And there's a story that's come out this week that really highlights this problem. Now, obviously, we are all implicated in the use, the burning of fossil fuels, but there are some people at the very top of the global fossil fuel industry who are, I'm trying to put this as diplomatically as possible, not the most pleasant people on earth. This is a story about how European oil company and oil refineries are selling petrol and diesel to Nigeria that is dirtier than it is possible to imagine or even exaggerate about. And this is a very good example of just how violently unscrupulous they are. Refineries that are in the Netherlands, in Belgium and in other European countries are selling diesel in Nigeria that is 204 times dirtier than they would be allowed to sell in Europe. Now, the toxic air that chokes the streets of Nigerian cities is, of course, an incredibly serious health problem. But this oil is so rubbish, this diesel is so rubbish, it's even damaging the vehicles that are burning it. Meanwhile, the likes of Shell, uh, Exxon and Chevron and others export 2 million barrels a day of oil that is described as high-quality, low-sulphur from the Niger Delta. But the crude oil they extract is not refined in Nigeria. Don't be stupid. It's exported up to Europe where it is refined in our state-of-the-art refineries. And that diesel is then put into all the clean diesel cars that we drive. And it's all marvellous. Then what the residue, the scum, the filth, what they scrape out the barrel when they finished, they send back to Nigeria. Meanwhile, in Nigeria, there are these things that are known as, as bush refineries. Really kind of cottage industry, homemade refineries. It's just unimaginable, the, the environmental damage that's going on there. But these the local people are either stealing or extracting or getting oil from the leaking pipelines that, that litter the countryside uh, and pollute all the waterways and the streams and everything. Uh, they're taking that oil, they're refining it in their own refineries, and what they're producing is a better quality, cleaner diesel than the diesel that the European refineries are selling them. LOL. In some ways, a little like the Terminator, if oil company bosses can find out a way of making money from selling crude, rubbish products to really poor people, the most vulnerable on the planet, they will not hesitate. They will not stop. They will do anything to rake in a few extra dollars. So the next time you see an advert, basically, for one of the big global oil companies that says they're doing loads to save the planet, and there's a picture of a little girl sniffing a buttercup on a huge poster at an airport or something like that, just remember, <laughs> that's possibly not really the case. And now a happy story from Birmingham, England. Yes, the uh, trials will begin over the next six months to, uh, to start using electric posty vans. The red vans that come round and deliver our letters every day, which of course are always diesel. Probably diesel that comes from the Niger Delta. But anyway, <laughs> the post office are going to trial because they're not sure if this technology works yet. Let's take it slowly because no one knows if electric vehicles really work. Oh, 10 years we've been waiting for this. Come on, post office, pull your finger out, you lazy. Anyway, so they are try doing a trial to be sure that it works with converted London taxis. So these are made in the UK. They're very popular taxis in London. Uh, they are electric range extended taxis. They do have a small petrol engine, but that's only used to extend the range. It does not drive the wheel. So they are 99% electric cars and so they are using those to deliver letters in Birmingham, Derby, Leeds, Edinburgh and Bristol which is a really good thing but they're trialing them it's just I've heard about trials now for at least eight years no we've done the trialing here's the vans 
get them, paint them red, start doing your job. Save enormous amounts of money. Okay, okay, I'll calm down. I'm happy they're doing something. Now, here's a very good story because that was meant to be a happy story. It is a happy story. I'm pleased. I'm pleased with the post office. At least they're doing something. But uh, here's, a, I think, a historical turning point. So there is a car factory in Germany, Zwickau it is, uh, and it's a Volkswagen car factory, but it has been a car factory since 1904. So since 1904 to 2020, it's been producing fossil fuel cars. Of course it has. What else is it going to do? But Zwickau is the uh, main factory where Volkswagen are producing the ID3, their, uh, their all-electric car that's coming out this year, and the ID4 that comes out next year, and a few other cars. I'm mentioning one later on. And very recently, they made their last, their absolute last fossil-burning car in this massive factory. It employs over 6,000 people, and they produce over 300,000 cars a year. And they will no longer produce any fossil burners. They will only produce electric vehicles in this factory. And with a bit of luck, if we can manage it, if I'm allowed to leave this damp island off the coast of Europe, I will be travelling to Zwickau uh, later this year to have a look around the factory and have a, a, a proper test drive of the ID3. It's on the cards and all we can do is cross our fingers and hope. Now this next story is quite funny, although it is it's a bit annoying I suppose. As many of you will know, the sales of electric bikes have just gone off the scale unbelievable uh, during the lockdown. They've really, really taken off. Sales of bicycles, full stop, but particularly electric bikes have really gone through the roof. And there is an amazing bike company in the Netherlands called Van Moof. Uh, and I just think that's such a cool name. But uh, yeah, okay, I know I'm a little bit of, I had to look this up, a Nederlanderphile. This amazing company, Van Moof, have made this TV commercial and the French Advertising Authority, regulatory body, they have banned this advert for a bike. It's just amazing. Uh, I mean, why would they ban it? Was it because they made false claims about the bike? No. Was it because they suggested that the bike might make you more beautiful and sexually attractive? No, they didn't. They banned it because they claimed it cast an unfair negative light on the automotive industry. What the what? Uh, this is the advert is playing now. You can see it. Um, you know, and it's a very, very cool commercial. And it's showing a kind of stupid, fat sports car with massive exhaust pipes gradually melting and disappearing as in, you know, with the chaos of, of urban traffic all around it. It's not like they're not like making it up. It's not like cities work really well with tens of thousands or if not millions of combustion cars sitting in traffic jams pumping out toxic gas. And wouldn't it be better if people moved around on their bikes much more, which is, I think, a fairly good idea. But anyway, it's been banned. But of course, when you ban something, this is the real beauty of uh, deplatforming or trying to shut people up or you know suppressing uh, uh, someone's ideas because they make you feel uncomfortable. It doesn't work. It does not work. It might, whether it's a good idea or not, I don't care. It doesn't work because that stuff will come out somewhere else. Well, that's a, this is a brilliant example. You ban the advert and what happens? Millions of people watch it on YouTube and think it's really cool. It's done incredible business for Van Moof. So, you know, congratulations, Van Moof. You've done extremely well out of being banned in France. And the Van Moof looks like a sweet ride. We'll have it on the show before you can say, when are you going to have that bike on the show, Robert? <laughs> we'll do it soon. Now, having just driven the Seat Me, which I absolutely loved, small compact electric car, recent review on Fully Charged, I was very pleased to see the uh, announcement of the release of the Seat Cupra L Born. Seat, the brand, uh, is owned by Volkswagen, and the Cupra L Born is built on the MEB platform that uh, Volkswagen have developed, which is what's in the Volkswagen ID3 that's coming out later this year. But this is the, the Cupra L Born is classified as a hot hatch. Ooh, that sounds quite spicy. This vehicle comes with a 77 kilowatt hour battery with a, a range of around 500 kilometers or 310 miles on a charge, which is very impressive for a smallish car. It's not a massive car. And I just think it looks kind of cool because there's so many cars, being electric cars being developed that are essentially like the Kona or the uh, Kia e-Niro, they're kind of compact SUVs. That's the style. And what I'm really pleased about is that it at least is a smallish, a smallish hatchback, which is uh, the ID3 and the Cupra Elborn. 
So I was very pleased about that, even though it does look a bit spicy. And talking of compact hatchbacks, this is the last story of the day. We will shortly be making an episode about this, but I think it's worth a quick mention, the Nissan Aria. Now, yet again, it is a small, compact SUV-style car, but it is a 100% electric car. There isn't a petrol version. It's not a conversion. Nissan have done the same thing with the Leaf. So it's, it, it, the Leaf's been out, you know, just about 10 years. And this is the second electric car that Nissan have ever produced, pure electric from the ground up. The Nissan Ari will be unveiled in a, in a few days' time in a special, exclusive, private online reveal that fully charged have been invited to yeah we've got a we've got a special invite so we're allowed to go and look at it so we're going to find out about that we'll record a report about it it's about the same size and uh, in the same category as the tesla model y but it's about twelve thousand dollars cheaper it does have a liquid cooled battery which has always been one of the criticisms of the um of the nissan leaf that has an air cooled or atmosphere cooled battery now nissan have said that by 2023 they will have launched eight uniquely new not converted pure electric vehicles di different different vehicles so this is the second one so the first one took 10 years to get to the second one and now they're going to do eight in the next couple of years or seven I suppose because they've done two who knows they're going to do a lot more which is exciting I'll try and find out when I have go into my exclusive online meeting they won't tell me anything anyway looking forward to seeing that I think it's really exciting news there's clearly a staggering amount of electric vehicles that are now going, which would have appeared in the last four months but they've all been delayed they're all starting to come out now that's enough it's just a short news update update um, I just want to thank a few people who support uh, Fully Charged for $10 a month or more on Patreon. And if you're interested in joining them, you'd be very welcome. We would really appreciate it. I fully understand. It's a massive ask. I'm amazed that these people do it. It is incredibly impressive. It's what keeps this show on your small, medium and large screens. And so I'd really like to thank Adrian Bond, Don Weaver, Peter Scott, Stephen Harper, Stian Christiansen, Stuart McKay, Simon Price, Brendan Gleeson, Mickey Butler, Stephen Harris, Matt Richards, evguidelines.org, Steve Morris, Neil E. Roberts, Manuel Garcia, Greg of UK, Salvador Rosas, Kalyana Kea Johansson, James Price, and Martin Dumay. Thank you so much for your support. Really, really appreciate it. Lots more shows coming up very soon. So we're actually now going outside with cameras and recording stuff. So exciting. Please do subscribe to Fully Charged. Please have a look at the YouTube memberships. If you don't want to go to the Patreon page, you can stay on YouTube, stay within the Google bubble, and you can still support us that way, uh, which we really appreciate. There'll be lots more news coming soon about what our activities this autumn and next year, uh, very exciting plans we have. Uh, but that's about it, as always. If you have been, thank you for watching.